So recently we had the ability to catch both Walking Wake and Iron Leaves in Terror Raids right after the most recent Pokemon Presents. However, a lot of questions now are being asked about both these Pokemon. I hope I answered the questions about Walking Wake yesterday. If you haven't seen that video, it's in the description box below. But today we're going to be talking about Iron Leaves. And actually, Iron Leaves seems to be a lot more involved than Walking Wake was, which is pretty impressive to say because Walking Wake took a long time to explain in and of itself. So today we're going to be looking at Iron Leaves and everything that encompasses its origin, where it could possibly come from, how it's deemed the Paradox Pokemon, and anything else we can find mysterious about this said new Paradox form. So if this is your sort of thing, sit back, relax, and let's discuss this enigma that is Iron Leaves. So as you guys know, before we get started in theorizing, I always like to take the factual information first and display it here. And the origin of Iron Leaves, they they put this here. This, this right here. You don't say. Anyway, let's get back on track. So Iron Leaves resembles a sketch made by a member of the Area Zero Expedition in the Violet Book. It has a smooth, glossy body that has a metallic texture, and the glowing parts on its forehead and neck could transform into long swords, which is terrifying. Iron Leaves is the only known Pokemon capable of learning the move Psyblade, which is a pretty cool move in my opinion. One thing I want to say about the future Paradox Pokemon, and we're going to dive deeper into the concept of them further in this video because it relates to Iron Leaves, much like, you know, I did with Walking Wake relating to ancient Pokemon. These future Paradox Pokemon, they seem to exist from the same ecosystem. So a lot of people believe that it's alluded that they evolved, like, you know, the evolution of Pokemon evolved into them getting this metallic body. But there's evidence to conclude that the future Paradox Pokemon are from the future, but they're created versions, man-made, man-tampered with, so to speak, of original Pokemon that are now metallic and robotic in esque in nature. So when it states that this particular Pokemon, this Paradox Pokemon, Iron Leaves, which is heavily based off Verizion, which is one of the obviously three swords of justice, has swords coming out of its neck. If you notice, the swords look very similar to Iron Valiant's weaponry, which would make sense if all these Pokemon are being reanimated or recreated by some sort of mad scientist in the future for some unseen reason. He's going to be using the same materials when creating every single robotic Pokemon that he does or she does, for example. So it would make sense that that scientist would take weaponry you know, inspirations from other Pokemon or other designs they've already completed and have been successful with. And then also that can be backed up with the fact that this Pokemon learned Psyblade, which obviously can conclude that it was created in mind to be a powerful weapon of some kind, if you go with that type of theory. This information here may seem mundane on the surface, but it actually provides a good amount of context to both Walking Wake and Iron Leaves. It states the following, Iron Leaves and Walking Wake can be considered counterparts of one another. That's pretty obvious. They are both based on legendary Pokemon that is a member of a group. Keep that in the back of your mind because I'm going to come back to that later. They are the only Paradox Pokemon that can be encountered in a Terror Raid. That's another important tidbit of information. Both were first teased in this Scarlet slash Violet books, respectively. That information we know because we've already seen that, even before the games came out, actually. They are the only non-legendary Paradox Pokemon that can be caught only once, which is a very weird way of stating that these are not legendary Pokemon, which I don't know if that's entirely true, have been confirmed or not. If someone knows that, let me know down below. But that was very interesting information that the paradox forms of both Walking Wake and Verizion, you know, Iron Leaves, essentially, Suicune being Walking Wake, are not considered legendary Pokemon. I thought that was very interesting. Neither of them appear to have any additions of a culture. Correct. They don't. Because technically, the ones we see in the book are slightly different than the ones we see in the Terror Raids. Henceforth, my theory from yesterday. I'll dive back into that in a second too. Both were added in an update, obviously. 
So that's the mundane information part. Let's talk about the interesting tidbits that we can pull from this and what I think could affect the future of Scarlet and Violet as well regarding terror raids and possibly other forms of Paradox Pokemon we could see thanks to the introduction of Iron Leaves and Walking Wake, and it also includes into the lore of Iron Leaves as well. So let's rope around back now to the concept that Iron Leaves is based on Verizion, which is obviously a part of the Swords of Justice, which means that that particular legendary is a part of a trio that has two more Pokemon included in that trio. Does that mean that in the future we'll see Terror Raids featuring a Paradox Cobalion or a Paradox Terrakion? I don't know, but it would be very interesting to see if that happens because what that would provide for Iron Leaves is the concept that the Mad Scientist, the one that's talked about in Iron Valiant's Pokedex entry, would have repurposed every Pokemon on the planet to become this metallic form, this this metallic-like Pokemon, android-looking, UFO-esque, crazy, multi-layered, multi-faceted Pokemon. Like, I know that's a lot of descriptive verbs, but think about it. These Pokemon are repurposed, and they seem to be repurposed in a weaponized form. Like, they're supposed to be intimidating, scary, and powerful. With the exception of Iron Thorns, for some reason, Iron Thorns is kind of like docile, which is very weird because it's based off of Tyranitar. But anyway, the purpose is seems to be of that nature. And what's interesting about that is I thought a lot of how that could occur. How could you take a Pokemon that's still technically alive in some form, but reshape its anatomy into this metallic android-like design, but still be a Pokemon? And it hit me. Infinity energy is what you use to bring Pokemon back to life. It's the life force of all Pokemon. So when we inject infinity energy into like, for example, the life restoration machine that AZ repurposed into the ultimate weapon, it was able to restore Pokemon back to life. So perhaps this far off distant future, this scientist had figured out a way that if he could just harness the life energy residing in a Pokemon and transfer it into this husk of a machine, he can create an entirely new Pokemon from the basis of infinity energy. Wild, right? But it's plausible because we've seen something similar like that happen. So that's going to kind of call into question how the future of Pokemon looks because the question would be then, why would he be doing such a thing? Or why would she be doing such a thing? Because we don't know who the mad scientist is. If it's a he or a she, we have no idea. The point is, is that ultimately that could explain why Verizion or Iron Leaves looks like this in the future is alive, but it also has this new weaponized form. And then the last little bit of factual information regarding Iron Leaves is its name, which, yeah, it's literally iron leaves. It can be taken literal as iron modeled leaves. So, yeah, there really isn't much else to say. It's literally like walking wake is the identity of like walking through water. They did the same thing with iron leaves. It's iron leaves. So, not really much else to say besides that. So, let's hop into... You know, ending the theory now, going back into some information I brought up yesterday regarding Walking Wake that applies to Iron Leaves here, and then tying in some new information regarding the future paradox phenomenon. So this leads us back to Terra Pagos. Now, if you saw my video yesterday regarding Terra Pagos solely, and then also in Walking Wake's video that I did, you would know that obviously Terra Pagos is the third legendary of the game. And it's heavily alluded pretty much by Heath's book and the professors that it's responsible for everything going on in the Paldean Crater. That's terrestrial energy, terrestrialization, Terra Crystals, um, Herba Mystica, and Paradox Pokemon, respectively. Now, everyone can have their own theory regarding whether the time machine is quote-unquote real or not. Even I've done that. But the factual information at this time 
If you push the theories aside and your feelings aside, the game is telling us the time machine is real. So going by that lore, we know that the terrestrial energy that the professor siphoned to have the ability to go forwards and backwards in time comes from this Pokemon here, Terra Pagos. Okay, so with that concept in mind, until the game changes that lore otherwise, or until other theories are actually proven true, we have to go with that basis at the moment, in fact, and then theorize off of that. So once now that that's kind of out of the bag and we've explained that, let's hop into the theory as to why we're fighting Iron Leaves in these terror raids. How is it able to enter these terror raids if the professors are not bringing it through the time machine. Well, as I talked about yesterday, I think that Terra Pagos has the ability to use its terrestrial energy in one or two ways. One, it's able to pull things from space and time on its own, very similar to how Dialga uses its time powers. The second possibility is that it could peer into the past and the future. And when I say peer, I mean it's able to identify any Pokemon's past genetic makeup or future genetic makeup, use the Terra Crystals and its terrestrial energy to re-manifest that energy into a new life form, being a Paradox Pokemon. Now, that one's a little bit more wacky to me, but could I see them going in that direction? Possibly. Um, only because of the fact that I do believe this Pokemon could rival Arceus in creation. If it is based off the World Turtle, you know, it has an enormous amount of power, essentially, in the concepts of that story, as well in the concepts of the Pokemon we see displayed here. Terra Pagos could very well be able to reanimate genetic code of Pokemon through its own genetic makeup that's already available. So, for example, it can take a Dawn fan and basically re-manifest it with terrestrial energy into an ancient form of Don Fan or a future form of Don Fan based on its genetic makeup that it already lies within the time frame of this Pokemon's world. Again, it's a little bit wacky and it's a little hard to prove it because again, we have no other proof outside of what the game talks about regarding terrestrial energy. And that is simply this, terrestrial energy is able to have you go forwards and backwards in time if put in the right makeup like a time machine. So that has to be the way that we're able to fight these particular, you know, massive beasts like Walking Wake and Iron Leaves. And the only reason why we're able to fight them, even without the time machine, is because Terra Pagos is able to pull them from time on its own and that's how we're able to battle them within the terror raids. So either one could be correct or neither could be correct. Hopefully they give us more validity and an explanation on that in the future. But that's all I have for Iron Leaves. Let me know what you guys think down below. Do you guys think that I'm on the money or do you think I'm off the mark? Let me know what your thoughts are on this particular phenomenon down in the comments section below. As always, though, I'm Joe Gain, and I'm out.